I want to describe two more examples of groups that are not commutative or not abelian. Um, there's another way to say it, abelian and commutative mean the same thing. We already discussed this example of the eight symmetries of the square, including four rotations and four flips. This group is not commutative um, because you know, this rotation combined with that flip is not the same as the flip combined with the rotation. Okay, so one is the group of two by two matrices with non-zero determinant under matrix multiplication. All right. You might not know how to multiply matrices and that's okay. This class might be your first exposure to how to multiply matrices. If you've taken linear algebra before, then great. You know, this, this allows you to get some more advanced examples in this class. Um, so yeah, matrices form a group, square matrices form a group under multiplication, so long as you have non-zero determinant. The determinant of a matrix has to be non-zero and only in order for it to have an inverse. And what's the identity of this group? It's just the identity matrix, right? It's sort of fun, like words that you've heard before, like identity matrix, they're now fitting into this broader framework, the identity in a group. So if you pick two matrices, um, essentially kind of at random, and you multiply them, you're most likely going to see that they don't commute. I mean, if you get unlucky, maybe they do commute. But, uh, but hopefully I won't get unlucky <laughs> for, uh, for you two. So I'm going to take two matrices, and I'm going to multiply them. And I'm hoping. Uh, they give me different answers when I multiply them in opposite orders. And if so, then I'll have proven that this group is not abelian or not commutative. All right, how do I multiply matrices? I'll be brief. The entry that goes in the top left is obtained by taking this column and lying it down on top of this row, multiplying the corresponding entries, and then adding them up. So when I take that column 2, 0 and lay it flat on top of the row 1, 1, I get 1 times 2 plus 1 times 0. And that's 2. Right? This entry here is also going to be the first column, but now by the bottom, multiplied by the bottom row. So I take two zero, lie it flat, and then I get one times two plus zero times zero. That's two. And the entry that goes here, I look at this column in this row, I have one times three plus one times negative one. So that's two. And then the bottom right entry will be obtained by doing one times three, which is three plus zero. <laughs> Please let me know if I've made a mistake. And again, no worries if you don't know how to multiply matrices yet, but this is a little exposure. And now let's fill out this bottom matrix. I'm sorry. So the top. Yeah. Uh, you have the recording bar visible again, kind of like a few mouse maybe somewhere. Oh, Thanks, yeah. I appreciate it. Yep. Uh, I, I'll finally learn eventually. All right, so let's multiply the first root column by this row and I get two plus three, which is five. Can already you see I got different answers. All right. And then here I get negative one. Here I get two. And finally here I get zero. All right. So since those two matrices are not equal that's how I can see this group is not commutative. Does it look like I multiplied the matrices correctly? Yep. Great. One more example of a group that's not commutative. 
Somebody mentioned the quaternions. All right. So you've heard of the real numbers before, and then you've maybe heard of the complex numbers. The complex numbers are all things of the form a plus bi such that a and b are real numbers and i squared is negative one. So i is this imaginary number. Okay. The quaternions are all things of the form a plus bi plus cj plus dk such that a, b, c, and d are real numbers. And i squared is equal to j squared is equal to k squared, which is equal to negative one, okay? So you have multiple different imaginary numbers, i, j, and k. And i times j is equal to k, um, j times k is equal to i, and then k times i is equal to j. I believe, but I might be wrong. And then let me tell you what happens when I multiply things in the opposite order. If I do j times i, I get negative k. If I do k times j, I get negative i. And if I do i times k, I get negative j. So ho ho hopefully that's correct, but it's, it's something like this. Quaternions form a group, very important in physics. Okay. Very important in video games. So when you play video games, you know, as you turn your, um, your avatar around, you see the world from a different angle. angle. And quaternions are, are very efficient for doing those rotations quite quickly on your computer so that your video game doesn't lag. You can see that this group is not commutative though, right? I times J is equal to K, whereas J times I is equal to negative K. So since I times J is not the same thing as J times I, that's why this group is not a BOU and not community. All right, any public questions? Yeah, I have a question. Yeah. Um, the fact that I squared equals to J squared because the K squared is the negative one, doesn't that imply that I, J, and K are the same number? No, just like, just like in the complex numbers, right? In the complex numbers, it is true that i squared is equal to negative one. And also, um, also what is negative i squared? Negative i squared is, you know, negative i times negative i. So the negatives cancel and you just get i squared, but that's negative one, right? So, so even in the complex numbers, right, here's, here's my uh, complex plane where, you know, you. If this is the point um, three comma one, all right, let's call that point three comma two. That point three comma two, now think of that as three plus two i, okay? And, and, and so here's i and here's negative i. So yes, they both square to negative one, but i and negative i are different in the complex plane, right? So, um, yeah. You know, think of this as, you could think of this as sort of like 2D space, but it's 2D space with a lot more structure. You have a multiplication on it. So the quaternions, you should think of as 4D space. You have the real direction, and then you have the I direction, but then you also have the J direction and the, and the K direction which are like, you know, your third coordinate axis and your fourth coordinate axis. And so, um, so yeah, in, in 4D space, right? If I had to draw the quaternions, <laughs> this is sort of fun. All right, so here's my real numbers. So this might be like um, one, and then I have I, and then beneath it, I have negative I. Now in, in 3D, I would have, um, like a J, but then I have a fourth coordinate axis as well. I'm in 40 and I have a, a K too. So yeah, I and J are, are pointing in, in totally like opposite 
orthogonal directions in, in 4D space. Oh yeah, I see, I see. Yeah, great question. Any further public questions? Wonderful, so thanks for your attention. You know, in, in group theory, you're learning a lot of these properties, like how do I show that the identity in a group is unique? But it's, it's also really important to have examples of more complicated groups in mind and, and non-abelian groups are more complicated groups. And, and here are two such examples. Thanks so much.